Before when creating a new Unity project, you got to choose between 2D and 3D. However, some of you might have noticed that we now have two new templates to choose between. I'm of course talking about the high definition template and the universal template. These two templates take advantage of Unity's new scriptable render pipeline and Unity is working towards making them the new standard. And new features such as shader graph and visual effects graph are being built specifically for these templates, which is kind of important. So let's have a look at what these templates are, why they're so much better than the old ones, and most importantly answer the question, which one should you choose? But first, this video is sponsored by Milanode. Milanode is a free tool for organizing your creative projects into freeform visual boards. It can be used for any creative project, but it's particularly well suited to the early stages of game development. I think we all know that that can get pretty messy. They've recently updated their whole template workflow, which makes Milanode extremely smooth to work with when planning a project. Also, they just added dark mode. Woohoo! We actually used Milanode in one of our videos when creating a turn-based battle system. It was very convenient to pick up and made the planning process a lot smoother. So if you want to have a look at Milanode in action, definitely check out that video. And finally, Milanode is free. So get organized now by simply clicking the link in the description. So. Which template should you choose? Well, if you're creating a 2D game, use Universal. Thanks to all the awesome Patreon supporters who- Okay, there might be a bit more to it than that, but to answer this question properly, we first have to look at what SRP is. Well, the current default renderer, also called the built-in renderer, is a general purpose renderer. This means that it was made to fit as many types of use cases as possible. However, because it tries to do everything at once, it can't offer the best possible graphics features, and it can't be optimized for your particular needs. To solve this problem, Unity built an entirely new rendering system, SRP, or the Scriptable Render Pipeline. SRP is Unity's new modular rendering system. If you're a graphics engineer, this means that you can customize the render loop in Unity via c -sharp scripts, which is pretty advanced. But for us mortals, this just means that Unity now has more graphics capabilities and that we get to choose exactly what type of graphics fit our game. But creating your own render pipeline quickly becomes very programming heavy. Luckily, Unity has made two predefined pipelines that cover pretty much all of our needs, and we can use them without getting too technical. These two render pipelines focus on different aspects of graphical fidelity, and therefore each one targets a specific set of use cases. And these are of course the ones that we get to choose between when creating a new project. The High Definition Render Pipeline, or HDRP, and the Universal Render Pipeline, or URP. And fear not, if you're already working on a project using the built-in renderer, we'll have a link in the description to a guide that shows you how to port everything over to the new templates. So now that we know what SRP is, what render pipeline should you choose? Well, let's start with HDRP. HDRP targets only high-end hardware, like PC, Xbox, and PlayStation. HDRP is meant for really high fidelity games, graphics demos, architectural renders, and pretty much anything that just requires the best possible graphics. This is not to say that HDRP isn't performant. It's still way faster than the built-in renderer when targeting high-end graphics. But if you're just making a low-poly stylized game, rendering everything with AAA graphics techniques might be a bit overkill. Of course, HDRP can create some amazingly beautiful scenes, but it also requires so much more work. To fully utilize all the power that HDRP has to offer, you have to create dozens, if not hundreds, of texture maps. Height maps, metallic maps, smoothness maps, AO maps, detail maps, normal maps, and so on. The list goes on. And this is for each of your materials. So creating assets for HDRP can take a long time. This means that the usual HDRP project requires a bigger team and therefore a much bigger budget. In fact, I would say that unless you're a graphics engineer, if your team is smaller than five people, HDRP probably isn't the right choice for you. Which of course leads us to URP. URP is, as the name suggests, the go-to render pipeline. It's designed to run on any platform with great performance. So unless you have specific graphics needs that only HDRP or a custom render pipeline supports, chances you're good to go with URP. Whether you're targeting mobile, consoles, web, or PC, URP is just a great choice for performant rendering. And at this point in time, URP actually does a lot. It has many of the same features as HDRP, but stripped down to make it more performant on all platforms. This however doesn't mean that you can't create beautiful games with URP. On this channel, we often talk about the difference between graphics and aesthetics. 
graphics refers to the actual rendering, while aesthetics refers to the art style and art direction. And I would argue any day that aesthetics are so much more important to making a game look good than graphics. In fact, I think we see countless examples of games with a fairly low graphical quality, which are still incredibly beautiful because of the great art choices. That being said, however, it's good to know exactly what the different render pipelines have to offer. So let's break it down. <laughs> So first of all, Shader Graph and Visual Effects Graph are now fully verified for both pipelines. This is great because both are awesome tools for artists creating shaders or particle effects. If you want to learn how to use them, we of course have videos on both. Also, if you're making a VR game, this can actually be done with both pipelines. However, realistically, VR with HDRP might get really performance heavy, since Unity is essentially rendering everything twice, one for each eye. Deferred rendering, though, is currently only available in HDRP. However, it's currently in research phase on the URP roadmap. The same applies to decals, which is a handy way of spicing up your levels by overlaying textures. Now, one of the biggest differences between the two pipelines is lighting. HDRP offers way more advanced lighting features, such as real-time global illumination, which simulates bounce lighting, volumetric lighting, which simulates light passing through particles in the air, and the big one, ray tracing, which is a whole new way of rendering light, reflections, and shadows. Ray tracing works by tracing the path of light as it bounces around your scene, and simulates the way that light interacts with objects in real life. This technique is definitely very performance heavy, but it creates the most realistic results, which is why it's been used by movie studios for ages to create pre-rendered images. Another thing that is very different though is shaders. HTP offers high-end shader features like height, detail, and parallax maps, which are used for displacement, detail, and simulation of depth in materials. It also has subsurface scattering, which simulates light passing through thin objects like cloth or skin. And it features advanced shaders like the stacked lit shader, which allows you to use multiple material features like subsurface scattering, iridescence, and is and and is to and and is anisotropy and isotropy and hazy parametrization at the same time. When it comes to post-processing, both render pipelines offer pretty much the same. The most important things that you only get with HDRP are ambient occlusion, which creates shadows in the places where two surfaces intersect, auto exposure, which simulates the human's eye's ability to adapt to different lighting conditions, and screen space reflections, which simulates reflections based on what's visible on the screen. I should mention that ambient occlusion, however, is on its way to URP. But HDRP doesn't get to have all the fun. One thing that is only available in URP is 2D lighting and shadows. Again, if you're working in 2D, URP is the choice for you. Another cool feature that is now available in both pipelines is camera stacking. This allows you to render from multiple cameras at once. For example, you can separate your environment, FPS weapons, and UI into different cameras, which can have some cool benefits, such as your hands and weapons not clipping through walls. Also, physical cameras are available for both render pipelines as well. Whew. I know that was a lot of information, but I hope that you feel better equipped now to choose the right render pipeline for you. We've created this table so that you can quickly get an overview of some of the main differences. And that's pretty much it for this video. If you enjoyed it, make sure to subscribe and ring that notification bell so you don't miss the next one. If you want to learn more about SRP and the two render pipelines, we'll make sure to have a link to everything that we could find in the description. Also, don't forget to check out Milanode. Again, it's free and a great way to organize your projects. To get started, simply click the link in the description. On that, thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video. Thanks to all the awesome Patreon supporters who donated in January and a special thanks to Lost to Violence Love Forever, CJ69, Faisal Marify, Megan Frasia, Dario Visaccio, Leo Lissette, Jim Shubob Jazz, Daniel Dusanik, Mark Antoine Girard, Naoki Wasaki, Jacob Sanford, Michael Korobov, Gregory Pierce, The Mighty Zeus, Alison Lafierce, Yijit, and Erasmus. You guys rock!